All right, so we're looking at the waltz from Sonata Number no. Nine, Niccolo Parini, Suzuki Number no. Five. Right. Uh, the best way to start this piece is by actually training your ring finger to play on the E string, right, as you play with basses, and your middle finger to play on the B string. We're going to completely forego the G's that happen kind of almost intermittently as an accompaniment, right, in between all the notes. We'll bring that in in just a bit, right. So start with C. Next, you're going to play an E minor chord that we call actually the friend of your toes. Why? Because there's going to be another one that is going to be the friend of your nose, right? So straight down here, right? Then to the G chord. It's a G7. It's one on the E string with D bass, right? Notice that I'm using my ring finger on the first string for that. And then you go back to C, which hides behind, right? It's another formation of, uh, well, in this case, the G, G chord. Right, so we're going to call it the friend of your nose, the upstairs friend. And then back to C. So that's the first part. So just playing it. Down. G. Back to C. Behind. Back to C. Right? And it's going to be constant with all of this, the first part. The second part, the B section, goes straight down to the E chord or the downstairs friend, or the down, down to the toes. Then the G7. Back to C, behind, now we're going to add an A chord, just so for an A minor, and then the G chord, the big, big daddy three as we call it, right? Uh, now that we're playing on that B string, try to use your middle finger, right? Okay? And then we do the first part again, but let me just play the first line for this, and. going to do the second line. It starts exactly the same way. So the first part is the same. Second, middle finger, right? Now we're going to skip this downstairs front chord and go straight to the G7. Behind. And instead of the, the A chord, it's going to be the same one, but it's a C major chord. Full C major chord, two on the D string, three on the on, on, on the fifth string. So that's a full C major chord, right? And it's the basis for a lot of country music chords, so if you want to get started with that, it will just get you get you going with that. Right? So now here's the second line. Right? The next part I like to use a little bit of lyrics here. The first part I call it, I'm so angry now. Fourth position, your index finger is on the fourth fret. One, two, three, four, right? You're not gonna start with the index finger. Play open E, two, one with E bass. Four, and it goes with that, I'm so angry now lyrics. I'm so angry now. And then louder as you get to seventh position, same thing, but on seventh position, right? Seventh fret. I'm so angry now. And then you do it quietly. I'm so scared now. I'm so scared now. Then you do the second line of the piece. Straight down. Straight there. Country music chord. C major. The next part. Fifth position. One, three, four, three, and then again one, three, four with E bass. E. Right? Starts on E, ends on E. Again. E. One, three, four, three. One, three, four. E. Move to sixth position. You're going to play the B and the A bass. The one is downstairs. The three or to your toes, and the three is up to your nose. Slide it one fret, slide it another fret, come back one fret. E bass. Right? The next one is exactly the same at the beginning. And you 
jump to first position, three and four are half stacked. That means that they're not on top of each other directly, but they're on the same fret. On the D string and the B string. Two and one, D and B strings, respectively. Then B and E bass. Then two and G string uh, with A bass. Right? So here comes that entire little section. Again, first position, third fret, the next part a little bit tricky, so it's best to actually tackle it in just section. It's one line and then we go back to just about the second line of the piece. So get a second position. And this time, instead of uh, being on the first string, this is what's confusing about it, you're going to actually use your one on the B string, A bass, so four on the E string, right? A bass, one on the B string, two on the E string. It's only the one that goes on the B string there to, to confuse you, right? So if you just remember that one is going to be in the B string, everything else is going to be in the E string, you're actually in much better territory, much better territory, sorry. And then move to the third position. This time you move your whole operation to the B string. One, four, three, right? And it's actually good to keep three there on the on, on, on the B string um, because of what comes next. We're gonna slide that finger back and half stack two over it on the D string. So watch. So second position, first string, only one is going to be on the B string. Eventually, all the fingers on the B string. Two, four. Move that one over one fret, but before you play anything, play the D bass. One, four, three. And then drag your three over one fret. And then reach for the pinky on the E string. And this is the trick, right? Move your pinky back one fret and grab the D string on the second fret with one. Right? Try it. Third position. Drag your third finger back one fret on the D string, goes to your F sharp, your, se your second finger, half stack, right? Move your pinky back in, and second position, one is going to grab the D string on the E, E bass. So without talking, and then you go back to the second line, and second part, third part. You actually go back and play the whole piece. Now, when you actually incorporate the first section of it, um, it's just a matter of inserting the G's in between each one of your chords, and you play the G with your index finger. 